I, I realized that I needed something because I had tried alcohol, I had tried drugs, I had tried crime. And I needed, I knew I needed something. And many times I had got to the point that death, I came to death doors so many times, so close to death doors so many times. And, and you know, uh, you know, some people say, well, you got scared of religion. No, I, I, I had gotten to the point where I was scared to be without. Stay good day. Welcome, my friends, to The Storyteller, where you'll find First Nations people from across Native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. Today, we'll hear from a Lumbee man who was in bondage to drugs and alcohol and was imprisoned for armed robbery. But now, because of God's mercy, he shares with others how they can be set free. My name is Boyce Locker. And uh, from Lumberton, North Carolina, I am a Lumbee Indian. I was raised on a farm. I had a mother and dad that never really uh, knew the Lord. In fact, my father still to this day do not know the Lord. But my experience was that I was uh, raised there. I was brought up in a, a good financial home, but I did not have a good spiritual home. My father was drink every day of his life. And my mother, like I said, she was not saved. We was raised in a good home, but that spiritual home was not there. We just did not have religion. Um, not religion, but Christianity in our, our homes. And, you know, and the reason I know anything about the church is because we were sent to church by other folks, you know, in our community, carried us to church. As a kid, I'd, uh, did not play any sports or anything like that. Uh, I mostly hung around. My grandmother pretty much raised, kept us. When I was well, a teenager, I, I did drive a lot, you know, partying. Uh, other friends, a lot of my friends lived a long away from me. Uh, those, we would say old school buddies hung around with them. But I'd seen uh, over the years, I, before I got out of high school, I think a lot of them lose their life because, you know, drugs. Or, uh, and, you know, I've seen that. In my, you know, and I was very mischievous for whatever, doing things illegally. It used to be bad for, you know, one of those kids, you know, I dare you to do this or I dare you to do that. And, you know, and, uh, I never forget one time I was out with some friends and we found a liquor still in the woods, and the guys dared me to dare, us, dared me to help them get it, and and we towed the liquor still all the way out of the woods. And the time we got it all towed out of the woods, the guy that owned the liquor still come up and called us in the middle of the night <laughs> for stealing his liquor still, you know, or you know, and things like that, you know. But you know, my mother, my mother Ned always told me, I said, well, you know, uh, things that you do to your parents. Your kids are going to do them to you, you know. And and we don't understand that at that point when we're coming up. Uh, we come parents, you know. We we see those, see those children doing things to us. And, you know, we think it's funny, but it's not funny, you know, when, when your own kids turn around and do it to you. Uh, at the age of um, 21 years old, I was incarcerated in the Department of Correction during the state of North Carolina. Uh, facing a life sentence for a uh, armed robbery charges, two counts. And but you know, as I went through life, and I realized that I was heading down the wrong road there. Like I said, uh, I hear many years when I was a young man coming up, uh, I was raised to go to church, even though my parents never did go to church. And, and when I uh, was twenty, twenty-two years old. Or 21 years old, I accepted the Lord on March the 7th, 1982, when I accepted Him as my personal Savior. Uh, at that time, I had a, uh, I was not murdered at that time. I had a young son. And, you know, it came to me, I said, what kind of life would I be living before my child? But, you know, before he, before he would turn one year old, I was saved, you know. I I was there in the church, uh, Riverside Independent Baptist Church that Sunday, and uh, 
Reverend Jerry McNeil was preaching the gospel there. And, and you know, the men, Brother Jerry was a uh, real good friend because he had been down the same road I had. And he, he was preaching the gospel there. And, and the Spirit of God just drove me that day. And couldn't take it no longer. And I just surrendered to the gospel and accepted him as my personal Savior that day. I, I realized that I needed something because I had tried alcohol, I had tried drugs, I had tried crime, and I needed, I knew I needed something. And many times I had got to the point that death, I came to death doors so many times, so close to death doors so many times, and you know, uh, you know, some people say, well, you got scared of religion. No, I, I, I had got to the point where I was scared to be without that comfort spirit within me, you know, and being able to, you know, be able to lay down in peace because not having to look around, wonder where, where the law was hunting me or, or somebody else hunting me to take my life, you know. I had seen this, I had experienced how God had blessed other people. And, you know, and I, it was like a hunger that I wanted some of that, you know. And when I seen, you know, what Christ could do for me in my life, you know. And that's how I, I accepted the gospel then, you know. And, and later on, I, I, you know, I went, I remember where I came from by being incarcerated for 13 months, seven days and four hours. I remember where I came from. And that gave me an opportunity to go back and share the gospel with somebody else. You know, and you know, as I journeyed through these uh, 22 years of being out, being able to fellowship with other Native Americans, sharing the gospel with them through mission work, uh, through uh, prison ministry. In fact, one of the, my strongest ministry is a prison ministry there in the state of North Carolina, where I'm able to speak to folks and tell them, look, you know, I've seen what drugs would do. I think what alcohol would do. I've seen many things over my years of experience, you know. As today, you know, I thank the Lord because I could have been uh, dead a long time ago because many times I faced someone trying to kill me or drugs trying to take me out. And, you know, I faced that many times in my life. Many occasions when I would be out late at night, uh, facing these things, you know. Uh, in fact, I think many friends, my friends, they was killed because of alcohol accidents. You know, they're in Lumberton, North Carolina, where I am from, Robinson County. And, uh, like I, said, I came from an association of 70 churches, uh, and I had a good friend, uh, Pastor uh, Steve Brewer, and he was always my inspiration, you know. He uh, was always there to talk with me and counsel me. And, you know, today I'm glad that there in 1982, March the 7th, I was able to surrender my life to Christ as my personal favor. But, you know, as I journey through these years, like I said, um, I've been able to meet other Native American people. And it gives me an opportunity that the Lord had blessed me and spared me and given me the, because I thought, you know, a long time ago, I said, look, you know, I know what our people need. They need someone that's been there. And, you know, that's a good thing about it. If you ever experience something, you're able to, to tell other people how you experience it, how you deal with, deal with those things in your life. And, you know, I am fortunate today have a family of uh, two daughters and two sons. And, you know, they uh, was able to bring them up in the church. But, you know, the most amazing thing about it, I can say today without a shadow of a doubt, too, if my children was coming up, they never did have to worry about being in a home where alcohol and drugs were consumed. They never had to or about seeing their father using alcohol or drugs, you know, or fin being abused. But but that was only by the grace of God that I was able to do that, you know. And, you know, that's, I give all praise to Him. You know, I tell people, you know, anybody can be saved if they just trust in the Lord. 
I have a statement that I use a lot of times in my ministry, you know, when I'm uh, preaching or speaking to a congregation, you know, God will reach way below the bottom. He'll take a nobody and uh, make somebody out of them. He'll take an alcohol and make preachers out of them, teachers, you know. And that's what God come. He, he gives his life. Don't calorie that we may have life, you know, we have it more abundant. And that's what I look at every day when I meet people. You know, I look around, you know, we say, well, you know, we have a tendency, we want to look it down on other people. But it's only by the grace of God that we're not in that shape today. And I thank God for that, you know, that we're not in that shape today, you know. And I, I if, if I tour the uh, Northwest and Northeast going amongst the Native American people, you know, I see these things, but I say, Lord, thank God that you favor a wreck like me. You know, I, I just thank him every day, you know, because uh, I could have been gone a long time ago. I could have been dead, you know, but but by the grace of God. And I just like to say, you know, that, you know, God loves you. You know, and I, I, I'm living proof of it today. And, you know, God loves you, you know, because he, he just brought me so far, you know, I could do nothing without the grace of God, you know, and, and that's what I tell people, you know, out there, you know, you know, when you, when all hope is gone, if you just turn to God, He's there. You know, when you, when you, you feel like when you hit rock bottom, God's still there, you know. He said, when you, know, you may go to the highest mountain, God's still there. We may be in the lowest valley, God's still there, you know. He, He blessed me. He blessed me. Bless me over the years to have four kids, a wife, and he, he blessed me for 22 years to be able to be on the mission field amongst my Native American people, sharing the gospel. He, uh, he blessed me for right at 30 years of privilege ministry, be able to walk behind fences, walls, whatever you want to call them, preach and speak to men that, about the gospel about how God can deliver you. These fences may be around you, but the fence is not around your heart. God can still penetrate that heart. Stories like this remind us that there is hope for anyone who will turn to God and put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that includes you. It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. God can forgive you and give you a new life. He is able to forgive because He sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And because God's justice was satisfied, He raised Jesus from the dead. Now He offers us eternal life instead of the eternal judgment we deserve, if we will receive Jesus as our Savior. Do you want to be saved? Listen to what Jesus says. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Want to know more? Please visit our website, withoutreservation.com, and click on the tab, New Life. You can also write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. That's The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. Our phone number is 877-766-4648. You can also find us on Facebook at Without Reservation. Want to take the storyteller with you? Be sure to download our app. Thanks for listening, and remember the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Friends, there are more amazing stories to tell, so be sure to join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller.